Wow. I've got something really, really good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right, wow. let's get this off. Oh, hey, mate. Look at that. Look at the size of it. Yes. So, what? Terracotta, yeah. 19th century, copy of the Warwick vase. Right. Right. By Dalton of Lambeth. Oh, wow. Couldn't be clearer. Wow. Right in there. Of extraordinarily large size. I've never seen one that size. Really weathered one, well, hasn't These it? These days, this is good. The original Warwick vase dates back to the second century AD. It was discovered in pieces in 1771 at the site of the Roman Emperor Hadrian's villa at Tivoli. Brought to England, it was displayed at Warwick Castle, after which it was named, and from where it went on to inspire countless imitations. The heavily restored original is now in the Burrell Collection in Glasgow. Drew's handsome replica is missing key parts. That sockle is incorrect. Yeah, it's a cast, isn't it? It's a cast, yeah. cheap, nasty one, right? Yeah. The it's major okay. problem is it's missing the twin branch arms yeah. off there as well. That's a complicated job, that. So they'd have the arms coming out from here, which <coughs> were that naturalistic vine. Fine. So it'd come yeah. out, out like well, that. God, it's complicated. And curve there. Yeah. And then they dish in a bit like that, and then right, they come geez. out and curve again. Right. They cross over. So they're like that. So they're like that, and it's complicated. Oh. You are going to have to make the handles. Oh, no way. Really, you do like really to give me some, don't you? I don't want anything doing to the bowl itself. Yeah. Colour, I don't want anything doing to the yeah, colour. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't I it? I really, really like that. Value as it stands, three grand easy. Wow. All day long. Wow. Wow. Well, look, Brilliant we'll man. get it dropped off for okay. you. Yeah? OK. And, uh, Take care I'll of it. I'll try not to drop it. it. Don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop it. All right. Through you. Cheers, yeah. buddy. Thank you. So this Warwick vase is absolutely amazing. It's an incredible, iconic piece. But these things, they've never got handles and they've never got the bases. So I'm going to have a real problem because I need to find one at that size so I can get accurate photographs, accurate measurements, so I can really see something in 3D and recreate it. Before doing anything to Drew's Warwick vase, he wants to find an example that's intact. So he's arranged a visit to the 16th century Burley House in Lincolnshire, where he's meeting garden statuary expert and author James Rylands. James. Hi, Nick. What an amazing place. Well, welcome to Burley. <laughs> the thing I think you want to yes, see please. is right where over is here. It? God, it makes a difference to see it with the actual handles on. Yeah, wow, they are amazing, aren't they? The detail is terrific yeah. as well, isn't it? Seriously complicated, though. I mean, let's have a, have a look. If you think the original, though, Nick, of this was actually carved, carved. in marble yeah. Yeah. on a much bigger scale. Was it? Was it bigger? So what they've done is they've taken the idea of the vines and they've made the handles in the form oh, of intertwined right. vines. It's all about boozing at the end of the day. <laughs> yes, because we've got the Roman god of wine, Bacchus. That, that's what all oh, these masks well. are. And you've got all these wonderful little bunches right. of grapes down right. there. Fantastic. So, James, I have something to show you. This is what I've got to work with. Oh, you have got your work <laughs> cut out for you, oh, Nick. No. Rather you than me. Oh, that's interesting. And that helps us date your copy of the Warwick Vase. OK. Because Although Dalton started in the early part of the 19th century, they got a royal warrant in 1902. Yeah, okay. And the wares after that, they were stamped Royal, royal Dalton. Dalton. Right. And so, but anyway, I'm going to give those back to you. Thanking you. you. I have got something to show oh, you. Oh, OK. Here. And that is, I did a little bit of homework, and here are a couple of pages from the Dalton catalogue. Right. Oh, wow. And Dalton and Co. And this one is dated July 1894. Oh, OK. So if we turn over the page... What? Oh, wow. Oh, no way. OK. Wow, that's amazing to see the original design on paper. Thank you so much for that. You've actually given me a lot, even more passion to get this right, and I'm hoping to do it justice. Excellent. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Back in North Wales, Nick has uploaded the photographs onto his computer and is using a program that generates 3D images. Look at that. Look at that. So, yeah, it's fantastic. It's worked. I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out, and I wanted to do it accurate and perfectly. A 3D printer will create a full-scale plastic version of the handles for Nick to use as a model but he'll still need all his skill to do justice to this iconic urn.
In Clandidno, North Wales, sculptor Nick has had antique dealer Drew Pritchard's Warwick vase delivered to his studio. It's missing the signature twisted vine handles, but Nick has used computer software to create a 3D model from photographs, and he'll use this as a guide. It's actually better than I thought it would look. Um, you can see every single detail, even though they're very, very fuzzy. But what it does is it gives me the mass, the size, the shape, proportion, and it's just going to save a lot of time for me to get it exact. He will model the missing handles in stages, beginning with making a cast in plastiline clay, which has been left to set overnight. Here we go. Fingers crossed this works. Right, let's get this off without cutting myself. I've just got to take this off very, very slowly, inch by inch. Ah, it's pulling. Oh, okay. I'll take it out of this mould. Whoa. Whoa. It's not looking too bad. This is now... I mean, it looks a bit of a mess because, because of all this speckling, but everything is here. I can re-sculpt and rework all of that. I need to make sure these are in the right place. OK. Oh, no! One of them's just snapped, um, but it's fine, because you can just put it... Because it's melteable, I can literally melt it back together with a heat gun. So I'm just going to heat it, melt, melt it on the inside here, and then press it back together. Fine. Having repaired his mould, he now faces a more serious challenge. In order to attach handles to the vase, he needs to make holes in it. Drilling into an extremely valuable <sighs> vase, and anything can go wrong because this stuff is like stone. There's a huge chance that this could crack. I'm just going to drill these holes. I'm, I'm fingers crossed, nothing breaks. I'm really not enjoying this. <sighs> that didn't go too badly. After temporarily attaching the plastiline handles to the vase, Nick must now try to painstakingly sculpt every line and imperfection. The handles are a huge part of its aura, its shape, its design. I don't want this to be seen as a fake. I want it to be seen as an original. These plastiline handles will be used to create moulds for the final versions, which will be made of clay. I've probably got at least three or four days of re-sculpting, cleaning up and finishing. Got a lot of work to do. But yeah, it's getting there. No, sculptor Nick is working on Drew's Dalton of Lambeth Warwick vase. Oh, well, we've got one off. He's turned his attention to replacing the base, or sockle, that the vase came on with something more authentic. <sighs> Using the same 3D scanning technique he used for the handles... Yeah, I'm happy with that. ..Nick has created a mould that matches the original piece, which he will fill with liquid clay called slip. It's a stoneware slip, so fingers crossed, when it's fired, it'll be the same sort of colour as the vase. And hopefully, it's not going to leak out the edges. It's quite expensive, this slip, so I don't want to waste it. <sighs> no leakage so far. Look at that. Whew. So that's it, really. So I've got to wait for it to absorb the water. I'll be able to take this thing apart and have a clay copy that I can have fired. To complete the transformation from slip to stoneware, the base needs to be fired to 1,000 degrees Celsius. To do this, he's borrowed the kiln at his former school. The place hasn't changed at all. Where his old art teacher, Simon Scarf, is meeting him. I'm really nervous about this one. How do you think he's gone? <laughs> As I tell all my students, you know, we never know until we open the door. That's yeah. the beauty of working in clay. OK, let's have a look. Oh, my God. 
my hey. <laughs> Wow, it's fantastic. Should we get it out? Have a look, a proper look. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, God, it actually feels quite safe. Yeah, I can't believe how well this has come out. And the fact that it's a, it's a come out fired but looks weathered is just, it's an absolute miracle, isn't it? Once I patinated it, it'll look the age. I can't believe it. So now I'm going to get it back to my studio and fingers crossed it, 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 it works and I get the patinations right. Just a little bit more work. In North Wales, sculptor Nick Elphick's work on the huge Warwick vase is reaching its final stage. He's cast new handles in clay and added the newly fired sockle or base. Now he needs to recreate a century of weathering. I actually quite enjoy doing this bit because it basically just brings the whole thing together. I'm going to put a little bit of this. That's it. And I'm going to basically just very quickly go over the whole of this, really. Look at that. Perfect. I'm just putting a very small amount of this, this dye on, this paint on, and then I'm just, just putting it, just soaking it in. Just gives it that original aged stoneware feel. And then it all obviously come together the moment I start to put the, the patination and the dirt back over the top. It's almost like magical because it suddenly just looks as if it's never been touched. It has taken many weeks of research, risk and artistry. But finally, Nick is ready to return to Conway and find out what dealer Drew thinks of his efforts. There's no part of this which is easy. There's no part of this which, oh, he'll be able to do it. It's not. All the way along the process, it's highly skilled. A huge amount of work has gone into to re-sculpting all these missing parts, and they are done almost scientifically to the originals. Hi, buddy. Nick. The like guys, guys have let me in, so I thought I'd just cover this up before you saw it. Right, I'm keen to see it. Let's get, <laughs> let's, let's crack on. Yeah? Incredible. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> it's really astounding. It's, it's very, very good. Really? Yeah, it's very, very good. When Drew first revealed this antique vase, the signature twisted vine handles were missing and the base was a cheaply made replacement. Nick has performed an amazing feat of restoration. He's made a new base faithful to the original. Using 3D image scanning, he has accurately sculpted, carved and cast the two new vine handles that make this iconic classical piece so unique. Well, this has got it all, really. Yeah. Extraordinary size. The restoration, it's very, very good, yeah. It's very good. So it's its actually worth a considerable amount of money now. Really? Yeah. It's such a nice thing. I would want... I think it would have to be 5,500, 6,000. Really? Yeah, and I think that's achievable. He's used very, very difficult casting techniques. Then he's managed to attach these pieces, and then he's patinated them down to match as closely what would have been there, and it's superb. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's absolutely brilliant.
Dalton. 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 Right. Um, so, but anyway, I'm going to give those back to you. Thanking here, you. I have got something to show oh, you okay. here. Oh, OK. That is, I did a little bit of homework, and here are a couple of pages from the Dalton catalogue. Right. Oh, wow. And Dalton and & Co. And this one is dated July 1894. Oh, OK. So if we turn over the page... What? Oh, wow. Oh, no way. OK. Wow, that's amazing to see the original design on paper. Thank you so much for that. You've actually given me a lot, even more passion to get this right, and I'm hoping to do it justice. Excellent. <laughs> Cheers. Back in North Wales, Nick has uploaded the photographs onto his computer and is using a programme that generates 3D images. Look at that. Look at that. So, yeah, it's fantastic. It's worked. I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out, and I wanted to do it accurate and perfectly. A 3D printer will create a full-scale plastic version of the handles for Nick to use as a model, but he'll still need all his skill to do justice to this iconic urn. In Clandidno, North Wales, sculptor Nick has had antique dealer Drew Pritchard's Warwick vase delivered to his studio. It's missing the signature twisted vine handles, but Nick has used computer software to create a 3D model from photographs, and he'll use this as a guide. It's actually better than I thought it would look. Um, you can see every single detail, even though they're very, very fuzzy, but what it does is it gives me the mass, the size,